This is what Terraria Master Mode Sentry only looks like. This too. And this. Their immobility along with their extremely inconvenient attacks and low damage make the player an easy target for even the most basic of creatures. And with me as their captain, this is gonna suck. I enter the world and like any normal person would, throw away my only weapon, leaving me completely defenseless, which is how I'll stay until I defeat the Deerclops, who drops the first weapon I can actually get. For now though, I enter a cave, find a useless mace, a life crystal, and get jumped by a salamander, marking the first death of the challenge. I continue working on early game things until I have full platinum, 300 health, and some decent accessories. The corruption is to the right of my base, and wanting to explore the rest of the world, I build a safety bridge across the entire thing so I don't have to deal with any eaters. A slime rain also happens, but again, with no weapons, there's nothing I can actually do. I finish the bridge and explore the world until the unfortunate happens so it's a good time to explain the rules of the challenge. I am only allowed to deal damage with sentries, so no thorns or inferno potions, no traps or lava, and no whips. Although, accidental damage from a pick or bomb doesn't mean I lose. I also plan on defeating not only every boss, but every event as well. That out of the way, back to the challenge. The way I've seen others go about this challenge is by killing the king slime with lava first, then using the slimy saddle mount to kill the eye and the deer clops. I want 100% of the damage I deal to be from sentries, however, and the slime mount doesn't fit that criteria. So instead, I decided my only option would be for other people to deal damage for me, namely the NPCs. After all, it's not my fault if they just so happen to attack a boss or enemy. With the eye on its way, I break all the NPCs' floors to get them out in the open, and before I could do any Anything more, the Eye of Cthulhu awakens. The villagers occasionally attack, but I have to coax the eye into getting close enough that they do. I know very quickly that I'm not doing enough damage, but I press on until day arrives and the eye despawns. This was a kick in the pants. I hadn't actually tested the NPCs against a boss yet, and if they couldn't even beat a boss like the eye, how on earth could they beat a boss with more than triple the health? Luckily, there are still a few things I can do to increase my odds of success. First, I use the stylist I just freed to kill a few flinks, giving me their fur, which I can used to craft a deer thing later on. Second, I build a specialized deer clops killing box, which is basically just a few small boxes on top of a big one. Third, I want a few more NPCs to increase the total damage output, and while doing so I make a nearly run ending mistake. I break a shadow orb so the arms dealer can move in, but this also allows the goblin army to invade, which I completely forgot about and almost cost me everything. But for now, nothing. After a few more days of general prep, it starts raining so I head to the ice biome and wait the clock strikes midnight and the mighty Deerclops awakens. I teleport home and get all the NPCs into position. I head over the corruption bridge and start shepherding the Deerclops across. It feels a little cursed, but we eventually make it back, where I immediately die. Thankfully, and it's the only reason this is at all possible, the Deerclops never despawns, so I have as long as it takes to kill it. Unfortunately, I wasn't aware that if all nearby players are dead, the Deerclops will return to the tundra where it spawned. This is problem number Number one. In hopes of solving a problem I didn't even know I had, I completely changed the biome of the arena with a few thousand ice and snow blocks. With that done, I head back to the tundra, get the deer clubs, and head all the way back. I don't die immediately this time and use my patent pending strategy to survive the deer clubs while my NPCs go to town. They are doing way more damage than I could have hoped for. However, my health does eventually run out, and the deer clubs despawn. In complete shock that the one boss that isn't supposed to despawn it did just that, I open the Terraria wiki. And there it is. Apparently, the deer clubs will despawn after 24 hours of being summoned if all players are dead. Not wanting to wait for another blizzarding midnight, I guide a demon eye into the kill chamber to get a lens for a deer thing. And thank Gollum I did, because less than a minute later, I get this message. This is terrible. If my NPCs die before the event is cleared, they won't be able to respawn since there would be an active event. And with no other way of fighting the goblins, this would mean game over. That's it. Panicking, I do the only option available. The goblins arrive, I rush underground, craft two deer things, teleport home, and surrounded by chaos, summon the deer clops. I die thanks to some goblins, but with the arena now a tundra biome, the Deerclops doesn't leave. Two of the NPCs die, but the painter picks up their slack. After the most chaotic chain of events, the strangest boss fight comes to an end, and the Deerclops is defeated.
I grab its treasure bag and inside is the houndiest shootiest, meaning that I am officially the owner of a weapon. Thank Skeletron. Oh wait, never mind. This thing is complete trash. It only does around 20 damage per shot and it doesn't shoot particularly fast. This isn't great when every goblin has a ton of health. So I just sit in a box until I feel an evil presence watching me. Ready to finally beat the first boss of the game, now that I have a weapon, I place down who I have officially named Philip, since Houndia Shootius is way too hard to say, and the Eye of Cthulhu awakens. Philip somehow does less damage than the villagers, and I die with the eye having only received around a thousand damage. Losing to the eye twice is humiliating. I get back to waiting until 83 minutes after they arrived, the goblin army is defeated. Already six and a half hours into this playthrough, I place my first relic. Knowing full well that even with a weapon, things are only gonna get harder from here. Knowing that Philip doesn't do remotely enough damage to kill the eye within a night, my next target is the Eater of Worlds, who after defeating will unlock the Old One's army, which will provide 4 new sentry weapons and 2 sentry increasing items. I buy rocket boots from the goblin, lose to the eye yet again, mine out an Eater of Worlds arena, die to the eye, and finally summon the Eater of Worlds. I instantly know that this isn't going to work out. It takes 4 minutes for it to finally break into 2 and then 3. I start taking heaps more damage and I'm soon killed with the Eater still at 14,000 health. Not even close. With the Eater's nearly 20,000 health, it would take a minimum of 17 minutes to kill it, and I definitely can't survive against several worms for that long. So I turn to a bit of a cheesy method. By manning out a tall vertical area over the arena, Philip is able to still attack with me in complete safety. I still get hit occasionally, but with one tiny worm left, I jump down and the Eater of Worlds is defeated. I find the Tavern Keep and buy both the Ballista and Lightning Aura Rods. Just to find out, I have to defeat the Old Ones army before I can use them freely. I build a flat area over the desert and start the invasion. I saw somewhere that the lightning rod is pretty good for the army, so I place one on the right portal. I make my way to the left and I'm so confused on what I'm supposed to do. I place Philip, but now the right side is at the crystal. And just like that, it has destroyed only 16% of the way through wave 1. With no other options, I begin the battle again. This time, I try using the ballista. It's a tiny bit better, but I die and the crystal is destroyed only 46% through wave 1. How on earth am I supposed to pull this off? The only pre-hard mode weapons other than Philip come from completing this event, so I have to do this with the gear I have. I try again, 53%, lightning middle left, Philip right, 43%, lightning and Philip left. Wait? By distracting the goblins, I'm able to keep them in the lightning so they die faster. Using this, I manage to get 10 Eternian mana and place a ballista, yet I am far too late and the crystal is destroyed. 83%. 56%, 93%. I reforge Philip and the Ballista Rod, and using the Distraction Method, finally complete Wave 1. For a second, until the Crystal is again destroyed. I continue to tweak my strategy, but the same thing happens the next 5 attempts. I'm already 16 waves deep and haven't made it to the second of 5 waves. I buy 10 more crystals as if that'll be enough, and an idea hits me. I had dismissed specialty armor since no sentry armor is available until hard mode. And while that's true, summoner armor still exists and can boost my sentry's damage. So I mine obsidian, let the eye kill me yet again, grab a hellforge, and craft a full set of obsidian armor, granting an added 31% damage boost. Hoping that will be enough, I open the portals. At long last, I make it to the second wave of the Old One's army with very little damage to the crystal. Never thought that that would be such a big achievement, but here we are, I guess. The crystal now guarded by several centuries, I defeat the second wave as well. Yet, the crystal is still destroyed. My confidence in this being possible at all, slightly up, I return to using the distraction method. For wave 2, I put another lightning aura on the other side, then another ballista in the middle, completing wave 2 without taking a hint of damage. Then wave 3, earning me my first defender medal. Wave 4 is where it starts to go downhill. Wyverns now spawn, and with how slow the ballisti are, they frequently make it to the crystal. I complete wave 4, but not without heavy damages. The final wave arrives, and as expected, the crystal is soon destroyed with the Dark Mage at 1800 health. I lose the next attempt thanks to the eye spawning halfway through, as well as the next, and I hate to say this, 20 attempts. I kept expecting to find the strategy, but nothing was working. I even bought the flame burst rod at one point, yet I was never able to kill a dark mage in time. Kind of.
Using purely Ballisti, I make it to a 4 and accidentally place a Lightning Aura in a box, rendering it completely useless and wasting 10 Eternian mana. I still somehow make it to Wave 5 with practically no damage to the crystal. Unfortunately, Wave 5 proves to be a little bit too much and it is destroyed. The animation plays, but the mage's health continues to rapidly decline until... Less than a second before all the enemies despawn, the Dark Mage is defeated. While this doesn't count as a win, so my sentries are still locked, the mage dropped both the squire's shield and the war table, allowing me to hit the pre-hard mode limit of 3 max sentries, essentially tripling my damage output. I use the war table and unleash Tanya, then equip the squire shield and place down Tony. Victory now inevitable, I place the crystal in its pedestal. Holy hellbat, the game does so much damage. I complete waves 1, 2, 3, then 4. Wave 5 arrives and the Dark Mage doesn't stand a chance. In mere moments, it is killed and the Old One's army defeated, finally allowing me to use the Ballisti and Lightning Auras outside of the event. In celebration of my victory, I place down the Ballisti and just weep. My new weapons in hand, I summon the Eye of Cthulhu. I really don't know which weapon to use, so I switch between them throughout the fight. And much to my satisfaction, the Eye is getting wrecked. It doesn't take long, and the Eye of Cthulhu is defeated at last. What a journey. I decide to fight Skeletron next, so I build a basic arena and curse the old man. I start with Ballisti out, but they feel a bit too slow, so I change them out for Lightning Auras in hopes their armor piercing would allow me to go right for the head. This also isn't working very well, so back to Ballisti. I take out the first hand, then second, but day arrives and I am killed with Skeletron at 7200 health. Not even sure if Skeletron will be possible, I craft a Slime Crown and summon the King Slime. Like with the Eye, I switch out my sentries a few times and the King Slime is easily defeated. Next, I mine out an arena near a beehive, add a couple platforms, and break the queen's larva. I decide to use the gang for their attack speed, but they can't keep up with how many bees the queens spawn, so I instead take advantage of the Ballisti's piercing ability. Even with all the bees, I never get too low, and the queen bee is defeated. So back to Skeletron. I use Lightning Auras at first, but this time switch to the gang. The damage is way better, but Daybreak is my undoing. I try to survive Skeletron's enragement, but get caught and am killed with Skeletron so close to dying. I know it's possible now, so I go again with just the gang. I don't know what changed, but I only get him down to 4000 health this time. For my fourth attempt, I start with Ballisti to pierce through his hands. Then, once they're gone, switch to the gang. I almost die a few times, but with 19 seconds till day, Skeletron is defeated. I head right into the dungeon, and oh boy do I wish I hadn't. With how many enemies there are, the labyrinthian hallways, and the extremely low DPS of all my weapons, this is by far one of the worst places in the game. I die many a time until I manage to secure a cobalt shield and get out of there. Ready for something a bit more relaxed, I decide to take a vacation to hell. Using an obsidian skin potion, I mine a bunch of hellstone, craft a few tools, and save the rest for a rainy day. Actually wanting to take a break from the madness, I build an overcomplicated Dungeon Defenders 2 inspired base so I'm organized and ready for hard mode. Making my way back to the underworld, I begin construction on a hellbridge. As per usual, the underworld enemies are genuinely terrible to deal with. I die a lot, build a lot, and die a lot more. Wanting a general feel of how this fight is going to go, I summon the wall. It's very clear that this isn't going to be a walk in the park. I have to be consistently placing my Ballisti, and the leeches are impossible to kill. Only being able to have three sentries out at a time it means I'm only able to shoot around one projectile every second, which is not nearly enough to kill all the leeches and still do damage to the wall itself. So I am killed by a stray hungry, only more disheartened by the test. Looking at the map shows I traveled around a quarter of the world and was only able to deal around a third of the wall's health. This seems pretty good on paper, but the damage will only decrease as the fight intensifies. For survival's sake, I craft a full set of molten armor, but there's no way I'll be able to dodge all the leeches. I try a few different ideas to solve this, but none of them work as is. Yet with a few adjustments, one of them has potential. I buy the digging mole cart from the zoologist, pick what feels like a decent height, and start laying track. As I work, I start seeing the plan come together. I complete the left side of the track and go in for another test. I learned several things. One, if there are buildings or ash heaps, the leeches are able to get to me. Two, trying to pay attention to placing Ballisti, watching out for leeches, and carting away from the wall overwhelms my brain a bit, so I almost die a few times from forgetting to accelerate when the wall does. And three, finding a good place to put my sentries is not easy, especially when there are buildings in the way or when I can't see the floor I'm placing them on. I reach the end of the track and quickly die.
With all my new info, I expanded the track to the right, and wanting to fix the sentry placement issue, I built an entirely new and perfectly flat bridge across the entire world. The double hell bridge complete, I blow up the big chunks of ash and remove any inconvenient buildings. With not much else to do, I toss a guide voodoo doll into the liquid fire, beginning my first real attempt at the wall of flesh. I get into a rhythm of placing another ballista when the last one reaches the center of my screen pretty quick. And just like in the test, this consumes all my brain power and I get hit by the hungry a few times. Thankfully I survive and the wall reaches half health, then a quarter, then a thousand, then comes the end of the track. I get trapped and am defeated. I was so close. I just needed a bit more track, so I add just that. Extending it all the way to the world border. Can I just say, thank Gollum I made this a medium sized world, because if I hadn't, I'm very confident that this challenge would have been completely impossible. That done, I summon the wall of flesh yet again. I'm completely focused this round, and the fight is going perfectly. My ballisti are dealing just enough damage to come out victorious. And after hours of preparation, testing, and revisions, the mighty wall of flesh is defeated using nothing but centuries. Yet this is only the beginning. I waste no time dawdling. I head to the now hallowed corruption, kill a bunch of pixies, farm for souls of flight, destroy some demon altars, and mine my way to titanium. All so I can craft a pair of fairy wings. Next, my goal is to get the queen's spider staff, the only new weapon I can get until I've defeated at least one mechanical boss. It takes literal years, but I gather enough fangs and craft the queen's spider staff. The, in my opinion, second worst sentry in the game, only beaten by the explosive trap weapons. To test my new sentry, I summon the old one's army. This Spiders do a decent bit of damage, but are useless against anything more than a few blocks in the air. I easily defeat the Dark Mage eight times for all the Defender's Medals I'll need, and get started on the new and improved Boss Arena, where I almost die to a single Garden Gnome. What is my life? The pirates soon invade, and by just sitting in my house, my sentries defeat both the Flying Dutchman and the pirates themselves. Moving on, I craft a mechanical skull and summon the monstrosity, Skeletron Prime. I already know that three of my weapons won't do enough damage to kill Prime before day, so I use my spider staff. But trying to kill a flying boss using a land-based weapon is terrible, and trying to get Skeletron into their range hurts a lot, so I am swiftly defeated. Knowing I could do better, I summon him the next night. Again, I am quick defeated, so I give the destroyer a shot. My spiders do basically no damage and I have no way to defend myself from probes, earning my death within a minute of starting the battle. I do some in-between tasks until only a few nights later, indeed it is. The twins spawn when I magic mirror home and I don't stand a chance. I can't wear full titanium armor with its set bonus dealing damage, so instead I just equipped a titanium mask and breastplate for some extra defense. But Skeletron V3 still goes about the same, and I die at 1140 with Prime still at 48,000 health. That's only 6,000 damage in 4 hours, when I need to be doing that every hour if I want to beat him before night ends. But what if I didn't beat him at night? How about I fight him during the night and day? While losing to the original Skeletron, I notice that he doesn't despawn when day arrives. Instead Instead, he just gets super fast and one-shots you. Well, as it so happens, this is the same for the Prime Edition. See where I'm going with this? I set up two teleporters, wire them together, and summon Skeletron Prime. By teleporting back and forth, Skeletron is rarely able to hit me, and being at ground level means my spiders are able to do far more damage. Yet even with optimal spider damage, the day arrives and Skeletron is not even close to dead. He enrages and things heat up. I now have to be consistently teleporting or I'll get one shot, and that's exactly exactly what happens when I misclick and don't teleport. I try it again the next night, but for whatever reason, he just despawns out of nowhere. So I try it again the next night. This time, he doesn't despawn, and well into the day, Skeletron Prime is defeated. I'm confident this wouldn't have been possible in one night, so thank Cthulhu he doesn't despawn. With one mech down, I can now not only buy new weapons, but genuine century-specific armor as well. So I do, purchasing full Squire armor and the upgraded versions of the Ballista and Lightning Aura rods. I equip the armor and place not three, not four, but five of the Tier 2 Ballista. This might just be the greatest moment of my life. I give the upgraded Old Ones army a shot, and am quickly humbled when the crystal is destroyed wave 6. I could repeatedly throw myself at it until it's defeated, but I figure I might as well wait until I have better weapons yet. Returning to the mechs, I add asphalt to the arena and summon the twins. 
I'm able to survive pretty well, but even with my new weapon, I do far less damage than I hoped. I get Greeny into its second phase, but Dawn arrives, and they leave. I was completely lost on what to do from here, so the next night, the game chooses for me. The twins awaken, then leave with 18,000 health. Better, but still not even close, leaving me again with no good options that don't include teleporters. I didn't want to use them again, but I felt I really didn't have a choice. Greeny enters phase 2, then dies pretty quick thanks to the spiders, leaving Red, who tends to hover above the player so the teleporters don't really work on him. I leave their safety and put my spiders on the top platform, dealing out decent damage when Red is in his shooting phase. He enters a second form and the intensity drastically increases. Unfortunately, it's a bit too much and I am killed with Red on the cusp of defeat. I now know how the fight goes, so I set up a solid block section on the top platform to hold mass amounts of spiders, then summon the twins again. I kill Greeny and switch to Red, who quickly enters phase 2 thanks to the new platform. Scared of Red's high damage and my now low damage, I return to the teleporters, trying to keep him level with the first platform, where my spiders are placed. With Red down to 1000 health, I decide to finish off the fight with Honor, and the Twins of Madness are defeated, leaving but one mechanical leviathan remaining. While preparing for this fight, the ground begins to rumble, marking his imminent arrival. I build a box in the sky, and the destroyer awakens. My ballistae do insanely high damage thanks to their ability to pierce six times. This is great, but it also means mass amounts of probes quickly form. I'm forced to leave my box and die almost instantly. I summon it the next night, and again, die right away. I build a platform in the sky so I don't have to deal with the destroyer's body, but again, I'm overwhelmed by probes, eventually dying to a headshot. This fight left me feeling hopeless, to the point of me simply staring at the map just hoping inspiration would strike. But it doesn't. I can't teleport my way out of this one, so brute force it is. Yet I was never even close. 130, 144, 128, 100, 150, 60, 109. Never even close. With no way of killing the probes, there's simply no way to survive legitimately. And after nine complete failures, I broke. I caved. I did the one thing I shouldn't have. I built an invincibility chamber and kill the destroyer. I place my relic and move on. I mine out a Plantera arena and consume my first life fruit, but I just felt off through it all. I had given up. I go to bed that night and can't stop thinking about that faulty relic I placed as if I'd earned it. I get up the next day knowing I have to beat the destroyer the way I should have in the first place. And this time, I actually have a plan. I take down the wretched trophy, build a small upper platform with a teleporter connected for easy access, and summon the destroyer of worlds. The second too many probes spawn, I go to the safe zone where I place all my ballisti to kill them. This not only takes care of the probes already out, but stops the destroyer from taking damage and summoning more. It's a simple solution, but it works. The fight is still very dangerous, but it's it's far easier to manage. That is until a wyvern joins the fray and I am soon killed. But that was it. I was finally surviving, without the use of a machine. So I summon the destroyer one last time, ready to win, ready to redeem myself. And finally, the Great Destroyer is defeated once and for all. And I place what I fought for, lost for, and finally won for. My spirits once again high, I figured it'd be a good time to get the final non-Old Ones Army Sentry, the Staff of the Frost Hydra, or at least get the Frozen Key. I mine out a massive area in the underground tundra, realize it's way too high up, and mine some more. The farm complete, I start AFKing while my sentries do all the heavy lifting. You'd think sentries would be good for farming, but they naturally despawn after only 10 minutes, so I have to be constantly paying attention. I farm for a little over an hour until... A frozen key in my pocket, I can finally make use of the Plantera arena I dug out. I find a nearby bulb and awaken the Queen of Flowers. Phase 1 is boring except for her... While Phase 2 is far more deadly. Thankfully, I'm pretty much an expert- oh my gosh, that is so much damage. I pull an epic gamer move to survive and barely escape with my life, earning me the victory when Plantera is soon defeated. 
Back to the horrific dungeon I go, ice key in hand. Curse me for not finding the frozen chest before defeating Blantera. I manage to snag a tabby and eventually find the ice chest. I unlock it and grab my prize, the Staff of the Frost Hydra. I cannot believe that for two videos in a row now, I've had to get this weapon. But without further ado, please welcome... Uh, baby names... Sure. Ain, Derwin, Dimitri, Isla, and Heath. I equip the tabby and remember that the queen slime exists. I spawn her in and the crew absolutely obliterates her. Especially you, Isla, you're doing great. The queen poses very little threat and is defeated, leaving only the old one's army before I can face Gollum. I place the crystal and the invasion begins. Waves one through four are a breeze. Wave five requires a bit of distraction. The crystal takes its first bit of damage wave six and the final wave approaches. The first ogre spawns, so I place the entire crew by it. They kill it in seconds. Same with the next, and the tier 2 Old One's army is defeated. Unfortunately, I have to do another 10 times to get enough Defender's Medals. It takes ages, but it's never a problem. I even managed to do the 5th attempt without the crystal taking a hint of damage, meaning it's time to take on the Golem. I unlock the Jungle Temple and very carefully make my way through its corridors. I arrive at the Golem's chamber, and this has to be a joke. This is the tiniest Golem room I have ever seen. I add a platform, arena buffs, and summon the Golem. The crew is dealing really good damage, but I'm struggling to survive with such a limited area. I take one too many hits and immediately know that this is going to be one of those bosses. I add another heart statue and go at it again. I try using lightning auras, but neither them or the spiders are able to match the crew's damage. I again get overwhelmed and am killed. The problem I notice attempt 3 is that the platform is low enough that when the golem jumps, I can hit his head, taking damage. I move the platform, but still die attempt 4. I try reforging all my accessories to either angry or menacing, and trade out my wings for a summoner emblem. Still no dice. For my sixth try, I decide to use the entirety of the chamber instead of just my platform. I tend to get stuck in my ways and didn't want to complicate things, but this is going so much better. Having that extra axis of movement makes all the difference. The golem enters phase two, but I'm already low and am soon killed. I summon him again, and when he enters phase 2, I return to the platform, as dodging the lasers is trivial with the tabby, and the golem is defeated. Unlocking the tier 3 Old One's army and the new tavern keep items, I buy a full set of Valhalla armor and as per usual the Ballista and Lightning Aura staffs. I equip the armor and place the final member of the crew, Kalis. With no better weapons or armor to be gotten, I begin the final Old One's army invasion. Wave 1 is easy with the crew and my new ballisti, but there are already flying enemies which scares me. A lightning bug manages to damage the crystal wave 2, and wyverns wave 3 are no joke. I move the crew to quickly take out a dark mage who drops the relic wave 4, then do the same wave 5 for the ogre. Wave 6 starts with the crystal at around 3 fourths health, and soon enough, the last of the last waves makes its appearance. Betsy awakens, so I reposition the crew. She's doing a lot of damage to both me and the crystal, but holy hell bet I'm doing a lot of damage in return. I get killed by Betsy, but the fight continues without me. This is gonna be a close call. I respawn, book it back to the desert, and witness as the tyrant of Etheria, Betsy, is defeated. That was it, the favorite moment of the entire playthrough. Going from failing 41 times to the tier 1 Old Ones army, to now defeating its final form on the first try was exhilarating. Alas, all good things must come to an end, and the thing that ends it is the Duke Fishron. I net a few truffle worms and fish him out. I am screwed. I have no way of popping his bubbles or killing the Sharkrons, both of which do tons of damage, and I die before the Duke has even entered his second form. Fishron is by far the boss I'm the worst at, which is only made worse by how inaccurate the crew can be with fast-moving targets, so I already know I won't be able to beat him with skill alone. I try riding in circles around him, but that is obviously a stupid idea. Being over 60 hours into this challenge already, I decide to not waste my time and just get out the teleporters. I summon the duke and teleport anytime he gets too close. He enters phase 2 and I keep going until a tornado lands directly on the right teleporter. So of course, I am quickly taken care of. I change strategy a bit to not only teleport away from the duke himself, but his balls as well. That way they end up landing in the middle, causing me zero issue. My hand quickly running out of clicking stamina, I get the duke into his final form. I now have to be consistently teleporting to not get hit. And with Fishron down to around 600 health, I decide to leave the teleporters and finish the fight in style. I immediately get hit for 241 and die with the duke one hit away from death. 
Now do you understand why I didn't do this fight normally? I couldn't even last 10 seconds against the Duke. 10 seconds. My ego now non-existent, I spawn the Duke again. I get to his final phase in no time, with no hiccups at all, and knowing my place, don't leave the teleporters. After 5 minutes of this, the Duke Fishron is defeated. Next up is the Empress of Light. I catch a Lacewing, then kill it, beginning the duel. Her first form poses no threat, but my damage is suboptimal, and she doesn't get below half health until 3.15 in the morning, so I'm killed with Day's Arrival. How am I going to deal an extra 50,000 damage in a single night, you ask? Well, this is the exact same problem I had in my Traps Only video, and the solution I came up with will work here too. By shimmering an enchanted sundial, you get the enchanted moon dial, an item that will skip through time until the next night. By using this before dawn, I can fast forward through the day and the Empress's one-hit kill phase to the safety of the next night. I start fishing for the sundial right away, making sure to craft a terra toilet for extra comfort. I get it from a crate, shimmer it, and kill another lacewing. She enters phase 2 and at 2.40 I hit the moon dial, forcing me to try and survive the 15 seconds of daytime empress. It's insanely close but I make it to 7.30, yet my arrogance gets the best of me and I am killed. Oh how the mighty have fallen. This stupid mistake means I have to wait 7 in-game days to use the moon dial again, aka 33.6 minutes of me watching Bojack Horseman while my character sleeps. It's a good episode and I make it to my third attempt, but I'm not able to make it through day. Figuring I might as well do something while I wait, I craft a naughty present and summon the frost moon. I kill an ever screaming sand tank the first night, but just can't kill an ice queen till the fifth, completing the event. I give the empress another go and get scammed out of making it through the day. So how about we do the pumpkin moon? Night one, I'm only able to kill morning woods, but I managed to kill a pump king night two, completing that event as well. Back to fighting the empress, I try to hit the moon dial, but miss, forcing me to wait a few cycles and hit it seconds before dawn. I have no idea how I survived that. With her moves refreshed in my mind, the fight is pretty easy from here on out, and the Empress of Light is defeated, leaving only the Martian Saucer left to kill before the final chapter of the story can begin. Luckily, while doing some fishing, a probe is able to spot me and begin the invasion. I fish for a little while longer, then head to the arena to deal with Martians. I build a little mud shack capable of stopping not only advanced lasers, but deadly missiles as well. It goes sicko mode and I simply run back and forth to avoid the onslaught, and as soon as it starts, the saucer is defeated and the invasion complete, leaving but two great oppressors standing in my way of completing this challenge once and for all. Things are about to get insane, so enjoy a bit of arena expansion ASMR before we kick off the madness. I finish the Moon Lord Arena, and not sure if I'm ready in the slightest, I kill the Lunatic Devotees, awakening the Lunatic Cultist. Their attacks are easy enough to dodge, but its Phantom Cultists pose an issue. My sentries won't attack the Cultist even if I target it so a Phantasmal Dragon spawns. I manage to kill it, and the fight continues. Unfortunately, I make two tiny mistakes and die. That was a complete fluke, and on my next attempt, the Lunatic Cultist is defeated, and the Celestial Pillars sow their chaos throughout the land. I teleport home and start fighting the solar pillar. I firmly believe that this is the easiest of the bunch and I will die on that hill. Literally. Several times. I kill enough enemies and rush to the pillar itself. I summon the crew before I once again die. Yet my brain still goes numb. I enter the vortex next and use the box method to kill all the enemies danger free. I again place the crew under the pillar, but this time just teleport home, where I am overwhelmed with pain. The stardust pillar is a bit harder. It's under the corruption bridge, so I don't have a lick of cover. I die my fair share of times and otherworldly voices begin to linger around me. I enter the final pillar and... I place my crew and impending doom approaches. I teleport to the arena, get everything ready, and fear coursing through me, the Moon Lord awakens. Old instincts kick in, but they're unrefined and not at all suited for using sentries only. I try to hold on to life, but after five minutes of battle, neither of the hands are destroyed and I am defeated. I prefer to just wing these fights and see what happens, so I was completely unsure how that would go. To be clear, not great. Tackling the problem of my survival first, I build three platforms along the entire length of the arena, hoping that being able to both jump up or drop down will make dodging easier. I also upgrade my wings to Leaf and exchange my Squire Shield for a Papyrus Scarab. With the Moon Lord's speed, only a few sentries will be attacking him at a time, so losing Kalis isn't a huge deal. Sorry, buddy. Still not really ready, I use a Sigil, begin 
beginning the fight anew. It goes beyond bad. I'm used to this fight on asphalt, so being on normal ground completely messes up any strategy I had. My next thought was to try and tank all of the damage if I'm not able to avoid it. I equipped some healing accessories and sit myself in a pool of honey. This is somehow worse than before and I die in seconds. Moving back to my traditional method, I summon the Moonlord again. This time, I just run like I did with the Wall of Flesh, constantly placing down new sentries. And this seems to be working. I do frequently run out of mana, which I would have never expected, but it's working. The other issue I'm having is needing to change directions every time the Moonlord uses his Phantasmal Death Ray attack. Every time he uses it, I risk taking heavy damage and have to stop placing sentries, halting all damage dealt. The other other problem is the tiny regen box I forgot to take down. I somehow hit it not once, but twice. The second time, I take a death ray hit to the face, and I'm killed shortly after. This was definitely my best attempt, but I felt like I was missing something. And annoyingly, I felt that that thing was the Rod of Discord. The death ray was simply way too inconvenient. With the rod, I'd be able to just teleport around it and continue on. So I begrudgingly changed my ice farm into a hallowed farm to kill chaos elementals. With that, let the grinding begin. Actually, never mind, the Rod of Discord drops within 20 minutes. Thank Gollum, I did not want to have to do that for 6 hours. The other item I wanted was the Frozen Shield. If I was going to be using the Cobalt Shield anyways, I might as well have a few extra buffs. Getting the Paladin Shield somehow took way longer to get than the Rod of Discord, but once it drops, I craft it into the Frozen Shield. My new gear in place, I summon the Moon Lord again. Right off the bat, I teleport into the Phantasmal Death Ray instead of around it. I destroy both of his hands, but teleport slightly too early knocking me down to a single heart. I get some distance between us and heal back to safety. I've started placing my sentries on the first platform so they can have better access to the top eye. This works, but distracted with not dying, the Moonlord is constantly healing. It takes a very long time, but the final eye is eventually destroyed, leaving but a single obstacle between me and victory. I quickly find that if I stay on the floor too much, the core stays below the ground and out of reach, so I have to try and stay in the air as much as I can but doing so decreases my mobility and increases how much damage I take. Another problem I'm having is that the Blisty Fire is so slow, the Moon Leech Clots almost always make it to the Moon Lord's mouth. Sure, I might have him down to 87,000 health now, but less than 30 seconds later and it's already back up to full. I try to hold on, but my health slowly dwindles until I am once again killed. I think about a solution for a while until I decide to mine out an area underneath the asphalt so sentries can hit the Moon Lord's core from there. I also add stars and bottles and mana regen potions for that extra bit of help. By this point, I've exhausted my store of lunar fragments, so I am once again forced to endure the pain that is the Celestial Pillars. Many deaths later and impending doom approaches yet again. This time I'm ready. My techniques are refined and I have a strategy. He awakens and I fight until his core is once again exposed. With the crew below the floor, I begin teleporting back and forth to keep the Moon Lord within range of as many of the crew as possible. Yet even still, the core is able to outheal everything I throw at it. So, I inevitably die. Hopeless, I once again just stare at the map, begging for any sort of revelation on how to beat the Moon Lord. Instead, I grow more despairing. I close the game and open up Team Mod Loader. I make a small area in a test world, spawn the Moon Lord, and just watch. Even with the entire crew firing non-stop, the Moon Lord heals nearly as fast, effectively making it so I only deal around a few thousand damage every minute. And that's with perfectly optimal conditions, something completely impossible in the actual world. So what now? I lay in bed that night knowing that the only way to solve this issue would be with pure brute force. There was no Hail Mary plan, last minute spark of inspiration, or clever strategy that would get me out of this one. I just had to do better, survive longer. I craft the final sigil I can, and once more, call down the great calamity, Moon Lord. I take a deep breath and remember all of the challenges and failures I've overcome to get here. And with pure focus and unwavering determination, the all-powerful Moon Lord awakens. I start the fight by running back and forth across the entire arena, teleporting when I need to. I destroy the Moon Lord's first, then second hand, so my strategy switches up a bit. Instead of placing the sentries on the ground, I go right for the head. And when the tongue grabs me, I rapidly move the Blissey so he can't heal. 
I get into a pattern pretty quick and manage to once again destroy his final eye. His core now exposed, I start placing my sentries underneath the arena. But now in his final form, I'm constantly being forced to place them back on top to kill the leech cloths. I'm only able to place around 6 sentries before I have to place 4 or 5 on top. It's a grueling process and super easy to mess up. There's just so much going on at all times that I easily fall out of sync and then Windor heals. This causes me to get stuck at the 28,000 mark for way too long, but I eventually make it past. I press on and after 25 minutes of battle, exactly 349 deaths, and the hardest set of challenges I have ever faced in this game, the Moon Lord alongside the entirety of Terraria are defeated using nothing but centuries. The journey now over, I proudly place the final relic and summon my sentries one last time. Because after all, this was Terraria Master Mode Sentry Only.